All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the ARRL band plan and how to interpret this to meet your needs. Now, at first, when I saw this, I was confused. And I know that a lot of new hams are confused when they look at it. And I would assume some experienced hams are confused a little bit when they look at it. So let's go ahead and walk through this and see what we can find. Uh, what I have here is the band plan pulled up and you can get, I'll have a link below where you can get it. How about that? And what I want to do is I want to zoom in a little bit and pay attention to a couple of different parts. So the first thing is when we look at the top of it here, it says U.S. Amateur Radio Bands. And it talks a little bit about the power limits. And it says U.S. Amateur Power Limits, FCC 97313. An amateur radio station may, must use the minimum power necessary to carry out the desired communications. And that's somewhat subjective and up to you. Uh, part B of this says no station may transmit with a transmitter power exceeding. So that's 1,500 watts for people who don't uh, use metric systems. PEP or peak envelope power, and that is emitted from your transceiver or amplifier. Uh, what I want to do is I want to go over to the uh, right hand side of this and take a quick look at this key. And this is really important. So if you look here, it says CW operation is permitted throughout all amateur bands. And that means that you can do Morse code or continuous wave CW anywhere you want. Below, that's a note for MCW, and that's modulated continuous wave. Now, I don't think very many people use this. Somebody in the comments will probably come along and say, I've been using it every day for 30 years, boy. And that may be true, and I'd love to hear all about it in the comments. But uh, modulated carrier or continuous wave is authorized above 50.1 megahertz, which is the 6-meter band. Um, except for 144.0 through 144.1, and we'll take a look at that. And you can't use it on 219, 219 megahertz to 220 megahertz. Test transmissions, uh, this is different than the MCW and CW, are authorized above 51 megahertz, except 219 to 220. Now here we have a little bit of a legend, and we have these different colors or symbols, and they mean different things. So red means that you can use radio teletype and data modes, like FT8 or JS8 call or FT4, Olivia, Contesta, I think it's Contesta. Um, but you can use those anywhere you see this highlighted in red, and your license designation is appropriate. And we'll talk about how you figure that out. Now, the next one down is a white box with some squiggly lines in there. Those squiggly lines are a sine wave for continuous wave, or CW. You can only operate CW in those areas designated with that particular part of the legend. Yellow is single sideband phone. Now, blue is for a particular band, and we'll cover this. It's upper sideband phone. Uh, continuous wave ready and data modes you can operate there, but there's some restrictions on that band, and we'll talk about those. Orange is a fixed digital message, forwarding systems only. And then you have E, A, G, T, and N, and you can see they stand for Amateur Extra Advanced, which is a license class that you can't get anymore, but there are still some advanced users out there. G is for General, T is for Technician, and N is for Novice, and N is no longer issued as well, but there's still some novices out there. And it says C, D, A, R, R, L, Web at... Uh, ARRL.org for detailed band plans. And that is more operating procedures. You can find those. Also, there's some information here for ARRL at your service. Okay, so we're back up in the upper left hand corner of the band plan. And one of the things I wanted to point out these first two bands here, uh, 2,200 meters and 630 meters, there's a note and it lets amateurs know that if you're willing or wishing to operate on these bands, you have to register with the Utilities Technology Council online and there's a URL. You can fill that out and uh, get approval and then you can operate on these bands. I don't know anybody who has operated on them. Now, I'm sure somebody will come along and say, I operate on those bands all the time, son. Well, I'd love to hear all about it down in the comments section. So the first one, when you take a look at this, you can operate uh, um, RIDI or data modes anywhere on this uh, segment, which is pretty tight. It goes from 135.7 kilohertz to 137.8. Um, you can use one watt um, and this is affected uh, radiated power. And so that's measured coming off of the antenna, which is a little bit different than peak envelope power. Um, also, you have the ability to do phone and um, 
photo modes, picture modes. But uh, again, that's that's it's a pretty pretty tight segment that you have there. Um, 630 is from 420, uh, 472 kilohertz to 479, so it's a little bit bigger. And it says you're um, re you're restricted to five watts effective radiated power, except in when it says EIRP. That's effective isotropic radiated power, except in Alaska, uh, where there's some restrictions there. But again, most amateurs don't if <laughs> don't operate on these bands. Um, let's go down and take a look at 160 meters, and this is the 1.8 megahertz band. And it has a note here: uh, avoid interference to radio location operations from 190 or 1.9 megahertz to 2 megahertz. But again, you have uh, the RIDI and data modes as well as the phone mode uh, available to you across this. And here is EAG. So this is your extra class, an advanced class, or a general class. And it's important to pay attention to those. If we come down, we take a look at 80 meters. Here we have more segmentation. So you can see the frequency allocations at the top. And then below that, you see uh, your designations for uh, it, um, extra advanced general <clears throat> novice and technicians so what you can see is is that extras can operate radian phone anywhere from 3.5 to 3.6 megahertz um, <laughs> advanced don't have that luxury they um, have a restriction here from 3.5 to 5 and you can see that down to bottom of 3.6 and then for the phone portions, it gets more restricted the lower in the class that you get. Uh, you can see general has less frequency bandwidth than amateur, than uh, advanced, which has less than extra. You see, I'm starting to get confused myself. <clears throat> Novice and technicians can only operate CW, and uh, theirs is restricted from 3.525 to 3.6. Now, I wanted to show 60 meters, and this is 5.3 megahertz, and this is a channelized band that we have. And then you can see the center frequencies for each one of these is designated here. And some radios have this uh, pre-programmed in them. Some of them don't. You can set it up, and then some radios won't transmit on 60 meters at all. Um, and then it tells you that you need to use upper sideband when you operate on these frequencies, CW or digital modes. And then here it says general advanced and amateur extra license may operate on these five channels on a secondary basis. So that means if you hear anything that is not amateur related, you should avoid using those frequencies. Also, if you hear something that is amateur radio rela uh, related, it is good amateur practice to uh, not interfere with their transmissions. It says that uh, you may operate on these five channels with a secondary basis. We just covered that with a maximum ERP effective radiated power of 100 watts. Um, relative to a half-wave dipole. Permitted operating modes include upper sideband, CW, RIDI, PSK31, and other digital modes such as Pactor 3. Only one signal per channel is permitted. <clears throat> now, one of the things I wanted to talk about was the generally accepted amateur radio convention is, is that we will use lower sideband when operating sideband modes on 30 meters and below, with the exception of the 60-meter band and digital modes, which use upper sideband. And so when you see this, um, there is a ITU regions one and three and FCC region two, which is different than an ITU region um, west of 132nd or below the 20th degree north. So that's uh, taking latitude and longitude into consideration. And those considerations are there based off of different rules and regulations for different geographies and how they operate. Also, when you look down at the bottom, novice and technicians have some CW capabilities on the 40-meter band, but they're more restricted when you're operating outside of ITU Region 2, which is North America. And then it gives you some information here, see sections of the Part 97 for different rules that may apply for your location. So I think that's going to cover most of how you read this, but I did want to go over to the right hand side and then we can see here uh, there's a couple of other bands that have some uh, some differences to them that we want to take a look at i did want to point out that on 10 meters which is technically an hf band novices and technicians do have the ability to operate single sideband because we're above 20 meters or 20 uh, 14 megahertz this would be upper sideband and you can operate upper sideband anywhere from 28.3 to 28.5 as a novice and technician that's highlighted here in yellow. Um, folks who have extra uh, advanced in general can operate 
uh, found an image anywhere from 28.3 to 29.7. This is a little bit of a larger band. And then we have Ridian data modes from 28 to 28.3. Uh, if I scroll down, I wanted to highlight uh, right here this um, 1.25 meters or 222. Some people call this 220. And uh, you can see that we have fixed digital messaging forward systems only from 21, uh, 219 to 220. And there was some special call outs to that earlier in the video that we talked about. But then if you wanted to operate uh, phone and image or um, Ridian data modes, you can operate those from 220 to 225, uh, depending upon your class. It's uh, novices here are limited to 25 watts, where... Um, Extras, advanced generals, and technicians are not. And then last, we were going to finish up talking about 70 centimeters, uh, 33 centimeters, and uh, 23 centimeters. <clears throat> and people will call this the 440 band, 900 band, 900 megahertz band, and 1.2 gigahertz band. Um, you would read this or interpret this the same way as everything else. So I'm not going to go through that. There's nothing fancy in there. Um, there are some geographical restrictions on each one of these, and it says geographical and power restrictions may apply to all bands above 420. See the operating manual for information in your area. And I'm sure you can find that on the ARRL website. Now, there's some bands above 1.2 gigahertz, and they're highlighted down here. Some folks love to operate these, but generally most folks don't. This is all licensed except novices are authorized all modes on the following frequencies, and they're listed out here. No pulse emissions over here on the 10 to 10.5 gigahertz band. And that really should cover everything. If you have any questions, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.